take a look now at the way they look on the financial statements. We can have uh, investments into current assets and then under other assets we can have other investments. Here we see loans receivable. Those are, are you know the category, the third category of types of investments. And here we have cash and investments non-operating. Okay, so here would be the plan fund cash, okay, and plan fund investments are all non-current, almost by definition. So we have discovered so far that you cannot have any cash belonging to the plan fund. So if you ever see a number there, you've got something wrong. And we can have no investments uh, belonging uh, investments under current assets belonging to plan fund and they're both down here okay uh, frankly uh, I cannot imagine too many others <laughs> reasons you'd have anything at all in this category but it's conceivable but um, to me since cash and investments belonging to the plan fund belong down here that usually you don't see anything else. Uh, maybe due from other funds as a current asset is conceivable, okay, under the plan fund. Okay, the, uh, we have the investments current and the investments non-current down here. And so let's take a, lo a, note, a look at a note a nine uh, excuse me, at first start with note four and then we'll take a peek at note nine. And so moving through the statements, moving down to the, the, the note about investments, you can we'll take a look at the things that we are disclosing about investments. Okay, now the first thing that we need to uh, look at as far as uh, this note is concerned and this is one I've wrestled to the ground with many people is you would be surprised at how many financial statements I have seen in the denomination that will have GC unitized bond fund zero zero unitized income for zero zero because they don't have any investments in it zero zero you know and the misunderstanding is is these row headings here are not required by the accounting manual. They're just examples of the different types of investments someone can have. So uh, you may have large cap uh, U.S. corporate bonds, small cap U.S. corporate bonds, large cap tie bonds, small cap tie bonds, uh, equity large cap tie equity. The more types and categories, these are supposed to be the risk categories I was talking about earlier. Okay, the more risk categories you can break it down to, actually the better, to give some granular understanding to the users. And these are categories or types of investments and that you can break uh, little groupings of types of risks that you have. Uh, it could even be industry. If you have a large number of one particular industry, you could put all of them into one um, one row. Just something to give your your users some understanding about the different risk pools that your investment handles. The uh, we have to keep our accounts in such a way as that we can tell the cost, and I'm going to explain that uh, how we do that in Sun Plus in a few minutes how we can keep the cost and then we have to have another way that we're keeping the appreciation so we we keep the cost in one account and we keep the valuation differences in another account that's these figures over here so to speak okay and then we add it together to get the fair value okay so this plus the valuation account equals the fair value Another way of saying it is the fair value minus the cost equals the valuation account. You know, whichever way you want to look at it. Okay, but these, very important for me 
to make sure you're clear on these are not required by the accounting manuals these rows these rows are simply examples of breaking it into different types of risk pools okay we also have a sort of an interesting thing here I'd like to point out to you is that all of the invel and this is the income and um, from the investments and all of the investments all of the income goes under here all right so this is these numbers right here appear on the revenue section of the activity statement and it includes unrealized gain and loss on sale of investments net unrealized gain and loss and sale of investments so we don't have losses down in expenses and gains up in revenue they're all right here under revenue so as far as the showing up on the financial statements unrealized gain and loss on investments is one account there's not one revenue account for gain and an expense account for loss no it is just one account if it's got a credit balance in it it is a gain if it has a debit balance in it it's a loss but it doesn't really matter because it appears right here on the financial statement as part of revenue so it could be an increase in revenue as you see here or it could be a decrease in revenue from this net loss okay but in any case we don't have gains in the revenue section and losses in the expense section but they're all part of revenue then we have this section here that explains to you how we did our valuation <clears throat> okay uh, direct or indirect observable market data is the way we normally get our valuations okay uh, uh, are observable quoted market prices I suppose you could have those if you look on the newspaper for the stock prices okay and other ways that we decide the valuation for each of our pools okay so as we come up with what is the market value the fair value we we have to explain that section I just left how we came up with these fair value figures and we explain it right down here okay and how we came these are the three possible ways of coming up with the values and this explains how we come up with it okay and so that is that so our next video part three of investments looks at the journal entries and the accounting structure that enables us to do uh, the accounting required by these statements.